The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. But I fell over every single hurdle. <laughs> it wasn't Love until it my does. coach came up to me afterwards and said, I'm so proud of you. You didn't quit. You ran mm -hmm. your race. Wow. Well, and I, I looked at her and I said, I could have quit. <laughs> and so this whole thing is birthed out of That's if we don't yes. know quitting is an option, yes. we will persevere. Yes. Bianca Juarez Olthoff knows personally that perseverance requires a deep sense of hope. Grit, don't quit. Next on Life Today. I'm Tammy Trent, and this is Randy Robison. Welcome to Life Today. Randy, we have a great guest today. We do. She's been on before, and people loved her. I've never met her before, <laughs> but she is a firecracker. Yeah. I went online because I you know, always do that when I'm prepping for a show and trying to get to know somebody, and I thought, I cannot wait to talk to this amazing girl that has a brand new book out, Grit Don't Quit. And anybody with a title, Grit Don't Quit, you, <laughs> you ought to lean in for a listen. We are here with Bianca Waters. All tough. You know did what, I did Tammy? It? Did you I did it so did good. I, I you brought the Hispanic. You brought the German. It's like an homage to my whole name. I'm so proud there of you. There were so many accents know, there that I brought. I, I don't know I'm how so I did it. You. Thank you, you did so great. much. I <laughs> like you so much. Aww. And when I'm done, I'm going to say, I love you. I know. Aww. So but I'm going to say right now, I like you so, so much. You have such a passion. Tell me also about this new book. It, it's it's not your first, is it? No, no, mm -hmm. it's not my first. This okay. is my fourth book. Fourth, okay. And uh, you know what? This really comes out of a lived experience. Um, okay. If I'm honest with you, I thought, wow, I uh, the Lord has graced me to live through a lot. Um, but now I'm in a new season that requires a whole other level of, of grit and resilience. And so it's birthed out of a place of knowing, but it's also birthed out of a burden for people who might feel like they have been, they've taken a couple hits in life. Yeah. They feel maybe like they're on the mat of life or maybe they want to throw in the towel. Yeah. Maybe they are, you know, committed to the things of God, but then they're asking themselves this question of like, when will the pain stop? Right. I believe God, I believe his yeah. promises, but like, when is this gonna end? It just feels like there's this spirit of resignation. Mm -hmm. Like people are just wanting to phone it in and mm -hmm. call it quits. And uh, this came out of, um, uh, my husband and I lead a church in Orange County, California. Okay. And we really saw a lot of people give up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is a burden, this is a blessing, and this is really putting words to not just let's define resilience, let's define endurance or perseverance, but really how do we build grit? Mm -hmm. And right. it's very practical, and I really want people to walk away with the understanding of this is how I get back up when I feel knocked down. I like to use the word grit. <laughs> and we'll talk about that because it's a very colorful and descriptive thing. It um, is. But, is this really, is this based strictly on the experiences of people you know, or have you been in places where you wanted to quit? I have been in places that I have wanted to quit multiple times over. <laughs> and I'm in a, even a season now where I have gone back and done multiple edits of the book and I realized how much this was a blessing for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, again, um, this is not necessarily about my life in its entirety. I wanted to weave in scripture and story and science. And so using the life of Paul the Apostle, who I refer to as my Bible boyfriend, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone can have a Bible boo, and this man, I just, I love him, and my husband is okay with it because I can have a crush on a dead guy, so yeah. we're fine. Um, but Paul the Apostle all. really typified resilience and grit. Mm -hmm. and I mean, the man was stoned, he was accused, he was shipwrecked, he was uh, swam up on a salty seashore in Malta. I mean, mm -hmm. the man endured so much, and yet, so much of our Christian theology, so much of the how-to of following Jesus was framed by this man's pen. And from his life and from his words, I really, really, really wanted to lay the theological foundation for how and why do we get back up. When did you realize you were a girl of grit? I mean, t tell me, like, when you talk about the challenges that you faced, mm -hmm. what was your toughest challenge that, that made you rise up and say, I am not quitting. I have mm. been made for something more than this right now. I'm going to fight through this. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to equip myself and I'm going to get on the other side of this and I want to tell other people how they can do it too. That is an amazing question. I'm going to answer this. I'm also going to include that there might be someone out there that's like, well, 
I, I didn't endure some massive hardship. I didn't go through trauma. That's right. You know, that's I, right. I don't necessarily feel if I'm on down in the dumps, but the truth of the matter is, is that there is capital T trauma and lowercase d trauma. Yeah. We all, whether it's the death of a dog or a death of a parent, whether it's addiction um, to pornography or a loved one who's facing addiction to drugs, we all are facing this primary, secondary, and tertiary trauma, trial, and tribulation. So yeah. I don't want to, I don't want anyone to listen and feel yeah. like, oh no, yeah. that's not for me. Yeah. It is. Let's, so let's be honest good. about some of the pain that we've endured and how do we bounce back after we've been knocked down. For me personally, I mean, I'm a, I'm a daughter of immigrants. I'm a first generation American. I was illiterate. I couldn't read, write, or spell until the age of about 12. I was morbidly obese. Wow raised in the concrete jungle of East Los Angeles, California. Wow. And I think statisticians easily could have written me off as, in the category highest prone to failure. Wow. So there's that component. Right. Uh, by the grace of God, really, uh, I, I made a big, the funny thing is you gotta be careful with the promises you make God. <laughs> I promised God when I was 10 years old, I said, if you give me words, cause I couldn't read. I said, if you give me words, I will give you my voice. Mm -hmm. And here I am all these years later, as a podcaster, a writer, a preacher, a pastor, a Bible teacher. And I'm so grateful that that, that resilience allowed me to yeah. be what I'm, who I am today and what I'm doing today. But even just all through, uh, through the course of high school, I mean, I, one of the stories I included in the book was I ran track. What possessed a 5'2 Mexican <laughs> to run hurdles? <laughs> I don't know, but don't know my mom things. said that we, Christians, we, as, as Christ followers, we can do all things in Christ. I don't think that's what Paul meant, mom. <laughs> Jumping over hurdles, I don't think that's what he was referring to, but thanks, mom, for the theology tip. Um, but I fell over every single hurdle. <laughs> Hurdle number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So to answer your oh question, gosh. how did I realize I was a resilient girl? That was the impetus. I just didn't know it. It wasn't Love until it, my yes. coach came up to me afterwards and said, I'm so proud of you. You didn't quit. You ran mm. your race. Wow. Well, and I, I looked at her and I said, I could have quit. <laughs> and so this whole thing is birthed out of That's if we right. don't yes. know quitting is an option, yes. we will persevere. Yes. Yes. So I think that this is really just a manual and a how to of like, what do we do when quitting's not an option? You know, you can't quit on your kid. You can't quit your job all the time, you know? So what do we do in those And moments? staying down wasn't an option for you. No, Obviously, no. if you fell off of every hurdle three, four, <laughs> and five, you also got up because that wasn't an option either. Yes. So like something was already burst in you, some mentality mm -hmm. of like, I don't quit. I, you know, I might get knocked down, but I don't stay down. Yes. I keep moving. Yes. So I, you strike me as someone who has a little bit of an inclination to be like, Okay, fine. You knock me down. I'm going to get back up just to show you, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I know I'm, I'm that way a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. But some people really struggle with wanting to even get back up. Yeah. Do you have any insight for the person who's been knocked down or who's fallen down on their own? Yeah. And they just, they're like, you know, I know I'm supposed to get back up. And maybe you're going to tell me how to get back up. Mm. I don't know if I want to get back up. Yeah. Well, where would you get that motivation? I empathize deeply mm. with that person because at my core, I am that person. Oh, yeah. mm. I think um, I read very resilient, but that has been rooted in an understanding of who God is, not a personality trait mm. or even a discipline. Mm. So uh, in this season of my life, I have to remind myself that this strength isn't my own. Mm. And there's a lot of books and psychological research and metrics on what is resilience and what is grit and how do we get back up. But really at the crux of it is, is Romans 10, what Paul writes, that the spirit that resurrected Jesus from the grave is alive in me and is alive in you and you. Yes. If that is the fire and the ember inside, I can't help but get back up, even mm. in those moments where I just don't want to. So I, I empathize deeply. It's a decision. That's important. Choice. That's yeah. important. Yeah. Yes. It, because we, we, we can't make that decision. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, that's the language that I want people to hold on to. Just one more day. God grace me for one more day. It's one step in front of the other. Uh, in my strength, I can't do this, God. But in your strength, I can. And I'm depending on your strength, the strength of your spirit that you promised me 
that you will never leave me, you'll never forsake me, that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, that there is, I'm a royal diadem, that I am a chosen elect generation, as First Peter tells me, that you have called me and fashioned me for good and not for evil, to give me a future and a hope, as Jeremiah 29, 11 says. So, so sometimes it's not um, a characteristic or a personality trait, but it's a decision to say, I am going to get back up yeah. because like Paul said, I'm more than a conqueror who Christ has called me. And that's, that's what I really want people to hold on to. This is, this is not um, mm. an anthem of something that is easy for me. This is an anthem of which I claim every day for myself. Yeah. Chapter seven, train your brain. Oh, yes. Tell me about that. I love that. And the thought. Which... Can we geek out over some science? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I like data. I like geeking out. And I started studying neuroplasticity and how we can really retrain our brain. And um, negative thoughts and positive thoughts are like uh, Velcro and Teflon. So a negative thought sticks like Velcro. It's easy to believe the negative. But you know what's really hard to believe? The truth and the positive. That's like Teflon. Yeah, yeah. So I could say a compliment. Uh, Tammy, you look stunning. Your blue eyes are crystal as the water in the ocean in California. Thanks, this green makes your skin just pop. And you could hear it, yes. but because of the lies that you've believed for so many years, yep. it won't stick. It'll slide right off like a fried egg off a Teflon Yeah, can. or I could receive it for a moment, and you're right, I walk out of here and go, oh, I, You I, see I, yourself in the mirror, or you listen to a comment yeah, on I, a social yeah. media, or you see a supermodel in the magazine, and you will easily believe Velcro a negative thought rather than believing what is right and true. Constantly. Constantly. And again, we can choose to live in yes. that or how do we train our brain yes. differently? It is, uh, our brain is like the horse and we are the jockey. Okay. The horse will go where the jockey tells it to go. <laughs> yeah. Our brain will go where we tell our brain to go. Mm -hmm. Now there's gonna be someone out there that's like, is this, you know, what, what is, is this manifesting? No, it's actually mm -hmm. a biblical, it's rooting God's truth in our hearts. I'm not gonna tell you, Tammy, you're a supermodel. Tammy, you're amazing. <laughs> Tammy, you're a millionaire. I'm gonna tell you what the truth of God's Amen. word says. That's right. So I'm gonna train my brain with the truth of God's mm -hmm. word. And that's where transformation comes. People are talking so much about transformation right now, transforming our waistline, transforming our academia, transforming our finances. But the truth is, the most powerful thing that you can do for yourself is train your brain. You have a great story about a woman named Mia <gasps> yeah. that really just puts a punctuation mark on that <laughs> point. Would you tell us that story? I loved it. So a couple years ago, I was working for an anti-human trafficking organization, global organization, loved it for a number of years, but I couldn't shake that I was supposed to go to prison. But there was something inside of me that I just, I had this holy hunch, I had to go into prisons. While there, um, it was our third conference, and uh, towards the end of the conference, I'm done preaching, and I even brought in a live worship team. Like, it was a blast, it was wow, so much fun. Wow. Well, an inmate stands up, she's 6'1", like very strongly built, wearing her prison garb, and she comes over and she says, can I have the microphone? And you know what you do when a 6'1 <laughs> inmate asks for a microphone? You say, absolutely, go ahead, yes. I didn't know what she was gonna say. I didn't know if she could sing. I didn't know anything. Well, she went, on to freestyle rap over the room. And it lit up the entire prison pod. I mean, the inmates are standing up, we are worshiping Jesus. And then she had this hook. It's like the medium phrase of this song. And she started with this phrase. It's just me and Jesus, pick it, pick it. It's just me and Jesus. <laughs> and the whole I prison pod, it. we just, it, it erupted with like us singing this chorus wow. at the end of the day, no matter what people tell us, no matter what people say, no matter what we have, no matter what we don't have, it's just me and Jesus. And it was this beautiful raucous roar. We gave each other a hug and I thanked her for her ministry and I told her that she's a worshiper wherever she was. Well, the thing with prison ministry is that you don't know if you're ever gonna encounter that person ever again. Fast forward three years later, I was uh, speaking at a conference here in Dallas, Texas. Hmm. And there is 8,000 women in the arena. And I had just finished. There was a line of security and they were trying to usher me out. When I hear this, Bianca, this scream coming from a person in the distance, I couldn't make out their face. They were wearing a lime green volunteer shirt. I knew they were volunteer because all the volunteers had lime green mm -hmm. t-shirts. And I got waved, I didn't know who it was, so I just waved. And I turned and was walking away. She said, Bianca. I turn around and I wave again. And it was the third time where she said, it's just me and Jesus. You knew. And I turned around and the security guard says, do you know who that is? I said, I am. 
absolutely know who that is. We ran into each other, we embraced, we hugged, wow. and she said, it's just me and Jesus. Wow. The words that were imparted into our lives for that woman's conference have been my anchor. And that day, what started as a freestyle rap released so many of my friends in the prison pod. And I went to sign up. I, I've been following you online ever since. I've been out and I went to sign up for this conference, but all the tickets were sold out. This conference sold out in an hour. So she said, I've got to find Pastor Bianca. So the only way that she can get in was from volunteering. <laughs> and she prayed that she would have an opportunity to connect with me. Yeah. And as mm -hmm. God would serendipitously have it, she's in the back and I, I hear, it's just me and Jesus. What a beautiful depiction uh -huh. of the truth of God's word, literally washing her mind anew, yeah. washing yeah. her mind clean and, and, and giving her a song in her heart mm -hmm. that is, hasn't left me until this day. So I, when I write these words, it's not just for the privileged or the pretty or the perfect or the polished. Mm -hmm. It's for those that are in poverty, whether that is emotional poverty, relational mm -hmm. poverty, financial poverty. Yes. We just feel like I could have the whole world, but my soul is not at peace because mm -hmm. I know that there's something more in me. And I just want to hover over that person like I hovered over Mia and I said, grit, don't quit. It's just you and Jesus. So get back up and don't quit until you find the freedom that you've been searching for. For Mia, it was freedom on the outside. But for many of us, it's freedom to be who God, who God, Jesus Christ has called us to be. How much of not quitting and the grit is perspective? Resilience is a choice. Grit is a decision. And whether people get the book or not, at my core, my publisher's gonna hate me saying this, <laughs> but I'm gonna say at my core, if you hold on to these three things, these are three hallmarks of people who are resilient. Mm. And when we talk about resilient, people think like, well, does resilience equal success? Mm. Maybe not as the world defines, mm. because I don't think that people would look at mm. Paul's living his last dying mm -hmm. breath in a prison and find that successful in our modern day. Mm. But his success was honoring the God call upon his life and the success that we get to walk in the wake of, the path that he has paved of his resilience that is success. Yeah. So here's three hallmarks of very gritty, resilient people. Perspective. And perspective is an honest evaluation of reality that's rooted in hope. So we could say, this situation stinks. Mm -hmm. This looks hopeless. Yeah. But my hope isn't in this situation. My hope is in God. In addition to having good perspective, gritty, resilient people, we have the ability to pivot on a dime. Mm -hmm. When all the walls of Jericho look like they're being erected in front of you, you find a way to go around the walls <laughs> until they fall down. Yeah. And then after that, it's finally identifying the purpose in the midst of the pain. A lot of this work comes out of an amazing um, a therapist that was in the Holocaust. And um, he realized that those that survived the Holocaust and, and went on to live lives that were thriving had an understanding of, pur of purpose. And so when we give people purpose and we walk in our purpose, it helps us understand the pain. It doesn't diminish the pain. It doesn't erase the pain, right. but it allows us to deal with the pain so that the pain fosters something beautiful inside of us. And that pain could be the fodder to fire the purpose that God is calling us to. So good. Okay. Your publisher will appreciate this. <laughs> we would like to send this book to you if you request it when you participate and, uh, and something that is really, really important, Tani, something very close to our heart. Very important. When I think about Bianca talking about um, the pain, that there are a lot of people walking in pain mm -hmm. right now. We have been with many of them. We have seen many of them, and we want to be a hope. We want to be a light to them right now. Why don't you take a minute and watch this where you can also be hope and light. The threat most often materializes out of the blue, targeting those who are innocent and unaware. It appears friendly at first, but inevitably, its true colors are revealed. With one final maneuver, the trap is sprung, and human traffickers have snared yet another victim. 
खाऊ न के होते अभी खाए अलग मत याद भो तैदी म हिंदी आए है अलिल याद छिड़े हिंदी आए तो जब अलग रो रोड चार देखे आए पे मैं ठा भ Pooja was only 12 years old when this nightmare became her reality, linking her to countless others like her who are approached, drugged, threatened and abducted before anyone even notices. Fortunately for Pooja, rescue life was ready. Our ministry partners at the border intercepted her captors and pulled her from their grasp before she was sold into slavery. You are safe. Everything's going to be okay. You're safe. Those are some pretty powerful words for those children. Probably right now at this exact moment some place in the world. I'm so grateful for this ministry, the team that is on the ground right now at those borders. They're reaching, they're rescuing, and we're restoring. That little girl asking, where would my life be? Where would their lives be? They want a better life. If we come together, we can offer them a better life, one life at a time. I know it seems enormous when you think of all the millions that are being trafficked right now that are being abused. Let's think of that one girl right now. And to be able to look at her and say, "You are safe because because we are coming for you and we're going to rescue you. We're going to take you out of that place and we're going to help show you a better life. You were made for something more than this and the enemy can't take from you one more thing from your life. We can come together. We know how. We know how to reach these girls. We know how to rescue them and we know how to restore them back to their original identity and who they are in Christ. Randy, we've been doing this a long time. They are there right now on the ground. They just need us to come together to make it possible yeah, for them. Yeah, absolutely. And you 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 hit it because there's three aspects of this. One is to reach, and that is where we go in and we educate. We we would rather prevent any kind of sex trafficking from ever happening. And so the reach goes in and speaks to that area yes. and, and, and educates people. It stops them at the border. It gets them where they're never in a position to be abused. Yes. But unfortunately, as you know, yes. there are many young women who are in an abusive situation. And that's where we go in and we rescue them. And sometimes it means kicking down doors, mm -hmm. literally. Yes. But spiritually, there are many to be kicked down. And the yes. third aspect is right out of Jeremiah, right? We want to give them a hope yes, and, and a, a future. future. Amen. And that's the restore. All of these efforts do cost money. We have people on the ground. We have facilities. We have materials that need to go out. And so we, we, we look at it and we say, okay, how many are we reaching with the overall budget? And that's how we come up with these numbers where you say, okay, it costs about $128 to reach rescue or restore a child. I mean, a child's not a commodity. We know this, this is what we're fighting against. But to put it in terms that we can relate to, to say, okay, how far can my dollar go? Well, actually it can be doubled right now because mm -hmm. we have a matching gift, a $320,000 matching gift from some friends of the ministry have said, we'll, we'll match every dollar given, which means a gift of $64 today will, will help basically reach, rescue, or restore one child. The more that we give, yes. the more that we can give. That's right. You know, the more you put in our hands, the more we can put into the field yes. to reach, rescue, and restore. Yes. So my prayer, Tammy, is that people would say, what can I do? What does God want me to do? Yes. Because I know that this is, uh, this is a mission directly from God. It is. This is a mission of heaven against hell yes. here on earth. Yes, it is. And we're all a part of fighting it. So would you just take a moment and say, God, are you putting something on my heart to do? Mm -hmm. And it may seem small, it may seem big, but all obedience is big to God. Mm -hmm. Every life changed is big to heaven. Yes. 
So take a moment and pray. And then if God leads, go online mm -hmm. and make the best gift you can, the one he puts on your heart. Mm -hmm. That's the best gift you can. Yeah. Innocent children and young people longing to be loved and cared for are being abducted and sold at the hands of violent predators forced into the evil industry of human trafficking. Through Mission Rescue Life, you can reach out to warn children who are at risk for sex trafficking, rescue those already enslaved, and restore young lives and give them a future. With a generous $320,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help rescue one child can be double to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help save one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 Mission Rescue gift will be doubled to 64. With your gift today, we'll send you the brand new book from James Robinson and Jay Richards, Fight the Good Fight. This book will open your eyes to what's at stake and the unwavering truth that God isn't finished with our nation. It's time to fight the good fight and return to unshakable biblical principles. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the NIV large print thin line Bible. This easy to carry, easy to read NIV Bible with comfort print allows you to take in more of God's word each time you open your Bible. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help save 20 children. And you may request our inspiring bronze sculpture, a cup of water. Please call, write, or make your gift online. I hope you will go to the phone or go online. Make the best gift you can. Make the gift that God puts on your heart to reach, to rescue, or to restore. And if you would like Bianca's book today, request it. It's called Grit, Don't Quit. It will bless you. But most of all, when you support Mission Rescue Life, you will bless others. This has been so much fun. It's been amazing. I appreciate you so much. So grateful God gave you words, words to speak and to share and to breathe life into people. If that's you today, you have no words, we've got them for you. We're praying for you. Call the number on your screen if you need prayer. We're here. In Jesus name. We'll see you next time. Life today. Pull yourself away from the devil. Give your life to your father, the one who help you see. For over 60 years, Life Outreach International has shared the transforming truth of God's love in both word and deed. Our ministry to the lost and hurting is only made possible because of the prayers and generous gifts of our friends and partners who provide consistent, faithful support. Call now or go online to become a friend for life. Your monthly support will help us continue to bring God's love, hope, and healing to a world in need. One life at a time. So I'm, what I'm trying to say to everyone is God has a dream for your life. Navigating the journey from dream to destiny. Next week. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.